In this second video about attribute collection, I'm going to talk about editing a custom UI. If you haven't seen the introduction to attribute collection in the first video, you should do that now. Here I've loaded an example with an unfinished custom UI. Let's first check what we have and then decide how we can finish it. There are some collapsible group layouts that will help us see clearer. The groups are part of a column layout that will arrange all members like lines of text in a column. Let's start to add some attribute sliders to the first face expression group. I'll select the channels in the channel box, then I'll right mouse button on the desired location, in this case this row of buttons, to insert them here. And that's it. Ok, not exactly what I wanted, the labels are not nice. Instead of changing them all, I do an undo and then open the preferences of attribute collection where I can set initial labels to be nice names. Then I'll reselect the channels, do the right mouse button again and here we go, that's much better. Let's open the edit window for an entry. The edit window has a general section that is the same for all types of entries. A description of the entry type a button that brings us to the UI parent object and the type of the parent object. There's also a label which in this case is also the visible label of the slider and an optional annotation which is sort of a help text when you hover over that control. For scalar attributes like in this case there's also the attribute name and the min and max values for the slider. When I click on the parent button I'll get to the face expression group with the list of all children. In fact, the user interface is a hierarchy of layout objects and control objects. I double click on one of the children of the group to display its properties in the same window. When I change something like the label of this slider, I just hit enter and that will auto save and update the changes. You can always use undo. In versions before Maya 2018, the Z hotkey might not work in the edit window and you may need to click into one of the panels before using a hotkey. Let's go back to the hierarchy of the user interface. In this animation, you see how UI elements are part of parent layouts, which belong to other parent layouts. One way to see the complete hierarchy in attribute collection is the hierarchy window. This window shows you all elements of the attribute collection UI in their hierarchy. Parent objects are marked in light gray and can be collapsed for better view. Here you can right mouse button on elements to insert new things or to open the edit window and you can use middle mouse button drag and drop to reorder the elements. This window is also very useful for dragging and dropping elements from one layout into another one if you can't see them both at the same time. In fact, you can middle mouse drag and drop UI elements between the main panel of attribute collection, the edit window and the hierarchy window back and forth using them all at the same time. Some final remarks about the edit window. Here we see a group object with a list of its child objects. A double click on one of the items opens this item in the same window. The edit button can be used to open a new window for the selected item. If you have several items selected you'll get a new edit window for each one. This is useful if you need to edit them all. The insert button lets you insert items before the selected item. Move up and down are useful to move a number of items at once. Sometimes it's even easier to select the items in the list and then middle mouse button drag and drop them to the desired location. The delete button deletes the selected items. Remember that you can undo all changes. This was the second part of the introduction to attribute collection. In the third part I'm going to tell more details about the various UI objects.